Hello, everyone, and welcome to our, our weekly AutoCAD webinar. Um, today, we're going to be going over Beyond the Basics, customizing the user interface in AutoCAD 2016. Um, my name is Sarah Emsley, and our presenter today will be Volker Coco, and with Naman, our expert elite, helping us out and moderating any of your questions that you may ask in our chat window. Let's go ahead and move over to our next slide. And kind of put a picture to the to the names that I just gave you guys. So let's. Next slide, please, Volker. Thank you. So there we have Volker, who's going to be our presenter today. He's also our KDE here at Autodesk in our Lake Oswego office, and. I am a technical support specialist as well in our Lake Oswego office, and we have Naman, our expert elite, who is located out in Ohio. Um, let's go ahead and move over to our next slide. Before we get started, um, feel free to leave your questions again in the chat window. We will try to get to all of your questions if time allows it, and we also have a Q&A at the very end. Um, just a reminder, these sessions are recorded and they are uploaded to our YouTube page. And these links are made available just so that you guys know in your registration email reminder and after the webinar is done, you receive another post-webinar survey. And in that email, you can find um, our YouTube landing page, our Autodesk webinar landing page, and you can also find them in the chat window. Um, and some other in-house things on our next slide for our upcoming webinars, we have tips and tricks um, going over AutoCAD 2017. So this might be something to look out for um, if you guys want to pay attention to whatever is new and up and coming. Then after that, we have Back to Basics on March 31st. It's an introduction to layer management. And then me and Volker will be back with you on April 7th working with the Action Recorder in AutoCAD 2017. Again, our, all of these webinars will be posted to our YouTube page, and past webinars can be found on our YouTube page as well. Um, and you can visit our webinar landing page, like I mentioned before, and you can also um, check out our Autodesk AutoCAD community forums. If we move over to the next slide for me, please, Volker. Um, in our Autodesk Knowledge Network, it's a great resource to have because you can go in there and propose any questions that you have or any issues that you may come across, and it's a great way to interact with other users like yourself to get any help with troubleshooting, maybe picking up a new workflow, uh, locating new downloads, and those links will also be made available in our chat window. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Volker, who will be going over today's agenda and what he's going to be demoing. All right. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, one day I will learn how to run a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, um, welcome aboard, everybody. Uh, before I begin uh, talking about the agenda, I would like to throw a couple of polls out there for you. And uh, for those who have been here before, you'll, uh, you're familiar with these. But we would like to know, hey, have you been here before? Is this your first Autodesk Help webinar, or are you returning? Um, always good to see those who are returning. Always great to see you guys, and always great to see new people as well. So, looks like about close to 10% uh, have not been here before. Um, we'll hopefully we'll make this a good experience for you. Um, just kind of throw up the numbers there. So, quite a few return attendees. Um, I'm thinking that's a good thing. So uh, let's go ahead and run one more here. And that is to find out which uh, AutoCAD application, AutoCAD-based application, if you are using one of those, um, you work with. Uh, obviously, the choices here are AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. And those technically um, will take the lead. 
Uh, in fact, right now, close to 40% of you are using AutoCAD, close to 30% AutoCAD LT, and then a split of about 15% uh, between the two verticals and 3% on other. Go ahead and close that puppy up and let you see the results real quick. And then we're actually going to go ahead and move on. All right, so some good results there. Uh, the reason we like to know that is so that uh, we know the audience, what, what they're working with. Um, I hate to be showing everybody how to do something in AutoCAD and then find out people using AutoCAD LT can't do that. So we do try to tailor everything to AutoCAD LT. And um, that, of course, means that it will work with AutoCAD or any of the verticals. So enough said. Again, glad to see everybody here. Today's agenda, we're going to be customizing this CUI um, in AutoCAD. So that's basically the ribbon. It could be pull-down menus. It'll, it'll be context menus, those menus when you right-click. Uh, just about every bit of customization in AutoCAD can be done through the CUI. And uh, the one thing that really isn't included in there is uh, tool palettes. Those are not part of the CUI. But we could actually add list routines if you're using AutoCAD or verticals, not AutoCAD LT, of course. Uh, macros, uh, we can just uh, rearrange our tools if we want to. So what we'll do in this webinar is we're going to just kind of review the editor, especially if you haven't been in there. It'll be a first view, obviously. Um, We'll talk a little bit about what to do when the customization goes wrong, because it will, OK? It's never going to be perfect uh, in the beginning. It's not going to be perfect halfway through the project. You're going to mess up. Um, hey, if you're 100% perfect customizing, let me know. Be glad to meet you. Um, we're also going to create and load a partial menu. And what a partial menu is, is basically your own custom menu that you can take with you and move to other computers, distribute over the network, and that way you can customize this, customize this menu, the CUI, without affecting the AutoCAD main menu or maybe an enterprise menu that has been implemented. We'll add some custom commands, and of course those can commands will be added to a panel on a ribbon tab. And finally, we'll modify a workspace so that we can have these tools be available to us without um, uh, modifying the default workspace. And if we have some time, we'll go ahead and add a couple of commands to the context menu as well. So having said that, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my other screen here. And we will have AutoCAD appearing, hopefully, in a moment here. Refresh. There we go. OK, so um, I basically have a clean install here. And what the first thing I want to do is, because we will be customizing this, is I, uh, I'll be adding some custom icons, some bitmaps for the tools that I'll be adding to the ribbon. and. I have those icons in, are we OK on the audio? OK, um, sorry about that. Uh, so I have some custom icons. And I want AutoCAD always to go to that location when I select an icon for the command that I'm customizing. So I've gone into Options. And in the Options dialog, we have our customization files. And there is a path here under this tree view. This, I'll expand this branch. And you'll see that we have our um, default icon path. Now, my path will differ a little bit. And I'm just going to copy it out of my file manager path here. And I'm just going to double click on this. Whoops, can't do that. Click on it once to rename. And I've pasted that path in there. And I'll click Apply. So I've added that. And you'll see where that comes in handy uh, shortly. Uh, one thing I do want to say, the data set 
and files that I'm using will be available for download. And there's a lot more information in the um, uh, in the document that we could call the script, I guess, uh, talking about some of the um, things you should do prior customizing, like backing up, uh, how to create an enterprise CUI. But everything is step by step, so you'll be able to follow that uh, because we are going to move through this quickly. All right, so the CUI, we can easily get to it by clicking on this button here on the Manage panel, uh, uh, customization panel of the Manage tab. There we go, CUI interface. Um, being old school, I tend to type things in, which I'll do right now, and that brings up the CUI editor as well. What we have here are these panels are will change on you depending on what you're doing. Uh, here we have our CUIs and uh, the menus, we can call them that because that's what they are, and any partial menus that have been loaded into these CUIs. So for example, this Express Tools up here, that's a partial menu. And if we expand the branch here, you'll see that the Express menu has been loaded as a partial. Down here we have our command list. We can see the commands that are in all of these menus by choosing all commands and controls or by choosing the individual CUI uh, that allows us to see only commands within there. Over here in the properties pane, Depending on what you select, this is going to change. Right now, it's just uh, uh, showing me I've selected the Express Tools menu, and it also shows me the location of that menu file, as well as the name and the display name. If I choose the command, it will show me the properties of that command. So in this case, the name, the description, the command display name, the macro that makes that command work. And this is where we'd also, um, uh, well, these are pre-assigned icons, but I could easily click on this button and go to my custom icons to add. I'm not gonna do that. I have my custom icons available for another purpose. Anyway, um, there's a lot more to this. Again, I said this is going to be pretty fast-paced. I'll keep it that way, and uh, the documentation I've provided uh, will fill the gaps, and the help file can fill additional gaps. Switched over from the Customize tab, which is the default, to the Transfer tab. Basically, the Transfer tab does only a couple things, all right? It allows me to create a new customization file, and I can do that in either tab, or, excuse me, pane. I can open up a customization file, and of course, if I create a new file, I would want to save that file to a location. We can do it on this pane here. I, I like doing it on this pane over here because under this list of custom, uh, my main customization file, once I create it in this pane, it will allow me to lo um, add this file automatically. I don't have to pick it again from the hard drive uh, so that I can easily um, save it and load it into AutoCAD. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on New customization file. So it creates a new file like this. It's loaded in place. I'm going to go ahead and save that file right now. And I'm going to go to my working folder. And I'm going to call this tools. I don't need to add the extension like anything else in Windows world nowadays. If it applies to a program, it's going to save it to that file type. So here's that tools CUI. That's basically all I'm going to do in this panel uh, 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 tab. Uh, I'm going to switch over to Customize now, and I'm going to modify that particular menu file here. I could load it to this partial customization files right now. I'm not going to because I want everything, well, for the most part, everything in this menu to be my own 
stuff. Okay, so if I go to another computer, it's going to work on that computer. So I'm going to create my own custom commands and um, add those to this menu that I have, this tools menu. So you'll see it's not listed here because it hasn't been loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and click on open, or I could click down here as well, I suppose. I'll select the tool CUI. And now it makes it the current menu, and I see none of the other partials or any of the information about the um, ACAD CUI. All right, having done that, now I want to add some commands. I could grab some commands from the AutoCAD menu, and we'll do that later. Right now, I'm going to create my own command, and I'm going to use this new create a new command button. Now, to save time, I'm going to cheat a little bit, OK? I've gone ahead and placed everything I want to do today in this text editor. And hopefully, I've made the fonts large enough for you to read. Um, so by default, Auto whoops, did not want to do that. By default, AutoCAD creates a new command called Command 1. You'll notice that that command will now be placed in the Tools menu. That is the source file for it. I'm going to go ahead and rename that command 1 to something more unique. In this case, Purge All. So the Purge command, it will allow us to remove all unreferenced information in the drawing to reduce the file size, clean up corruption, whatever. But one of the functions not available in the purge dialog is the um, option to remove registered applications. Those hooks into your drawing left by a vertical application or a third party application. And this stuff can really bog you down. So I want a command that is going to purge everything, including the registered apps. So I've created a command called purge all. I'm going to place this description in there as well. Purge is everything. It's always nice to have a description in case somebody else is going to use this menu. For my command name, I'm going to call it purge x just because I couldn't think of anything better. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is add this macro I created. Um, we've had other webinars on macros, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on how macros work, but I'll review real quickly what this does, and the AutoCAD help explains it in more detail. The Control C is a cancel command. It cancels me out of any other command. By default, there are usually two Control Cs in there. I put in three because some commands actually require that. Uh, to cancel out of a command. The underscore makes it easy, uh, allows this command to work in international flavors of AutoCAD. The hyphen, that suppresses the purge dialog and makes it command line only. The semicolons will are treated as an enter. I could have left a space there that would have done the same thing, uh, but uh, semicolons more visible. So to enter, so purge, enter, enter, no for a response. I really don't want to verify everything. Enter to purge everything. And uh, then enter to repeat. And in the purge command, R for reg apps. Enter, enter, no, enter. So try it on the command line, and you'll see uh, the prompts, how they should appear. Notice the two control Cs here. I've gone ahead and just pasted in mine. And then for tags, if you want to, you can put tags in there. That helps in the search field. Typically, I don't worry too much about the tags, but uh, the tags do need to be added in this dialog by clicking on the little ellipsis. And then I want to, of course, attach an image to that. So in this case, I have this purge X BMP that I created. And I used this little editor up here to modify one of the existing um, buttons in AutoCAD. Um, and I'm not going to 
spend any time on that. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, I have now created that purge command. Click apply. And once I select it, the image here updates. And I have my first command. I'm going to go ahead and create two more. Oops, need to get rid of this. I clicked on the find and search, find and replace button. All right, so command one again. In this case, I'm going to add some uh, a couple of OSNAP controls here to quickly switch between OSNAPs. And in this case, I'll just put the description. I'm not going to do anything really here but copy and paste to kind of move things along. And um, go ahead and select this. And then the macro is just going to the system variable, OS mode, enter, change that value to 27. Uh, the apostrophe prior to the OS mode function, that tells AutoCAD to use this even if I'm in a command. So if I'm in the line command and I need to switch my O snaps, uh, that allows me to do that, that apostrophe. Oops. And let's go ahead and add a couple icons to that. And if I hadn't have changed that path earlier, right now I'd have to be browsing to the path that I want to get to. I'll go ahead and apply that. And one more command, and we'll move on. And this is another OSNAP one. This one goes to endpoint, midpoint, center, and node. And it uses an OS mode system variable of 15. And it is actually my favorite um, OSNAP setting. So I always make sure it's available. Oops. Display name. Let's go ahead and add that macro in here. And by the way, uh, you've seen me add the tags using that little dialog. We can also do that here. If you want to just do some typing or have a real long string, uh, you can just add it in this editor and click OK. And it just it's just like going into the tags, except for tags, for some reason, I'm forced to use that uh, button. So, And now, we'll just add those two buttons, and we will move on. All right, I've applied those, select that, there's my three commands. Okay, so in order to add a ribbon tab and a panel with my commands to the AutoCAD ribbon, I need to create a panel and a tab, then add the commands to the panel, add the panel to the tab, and uh, that is the process. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the ribbon here in my tools. I'm going to expand the branch, and I'm going to select tabs. And it allows me to create a new tab. So in this case, I'm going to call it Tools Custom. I imagine Custom Tools would sound better, but hey, that's what I'm sticking with. I have that done but I need to create a panel that I can add to that tab. So I'm doing that. And in this case, we're going to call this one um, OSNAP. Yeah. OSNAP Utilities. And I may have called it something else in the script. I don't remember. OK, we'll go ahead and create one more panel. And this one here, um, we'll call it Drawing Utilities. I know for a fact that this is not what I called it in the script, but um, 
moving moving right along. I'm not reading from the script is the problem. Anyway, uh, so we now have two panels. And you'll see we have a row one and a row one here. That way, dialog box launcher, and we can create slide outs. Some of these things we aren't going to get into. We just don't have time. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this. And notice how this is kind of wonky here, where it's just kind of sliding all over the place when I do this. If you have a lot of stuff in your menu, it may be better just to kind of go around, drag and drop like this into your row. Okay, so just a thought. You can make it as difficult as you want or as uh, easy as you want. I'm just going to go ahead and drag that around like this. And uh, you know what? I copied it to the wrong row or panel, I should say. So we're going to go ahead and plop that up here. Come on, you can do this. There we go. All right, so we've got those guys in there right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the purge all utility in row one of the drawing utilities panel. Now, I also, since I have my um, uh, OSNAPs here, maybe I want to go ahead and have the ability to get into the OSNAP dialog box. All right, so that's easy to do, but it's not going to be available in my menu. I'll need to add that from the AutoCAD menus. But the first thing I'm going to do is add another row, because that's where I want to place that command. And I'm going to go ahead and change all commands to ACAD commands. Actually, I should have done this first. Change to the all uh, main customization file and all commands. Now I'm going to go ahead here and type OSNAP. And the first thing I run into are 3D OSNAP settings and SNAP OSNAP settings. And I'm going to select that, right mouse click, and then I'm going to copy. Then I'm going to switch back to my tools menu. I'm going to go back to the ribbon, to the panels. OSNAP Utilities, and in row two, I'm going to go ahead, select that, right-click, and paste. So it's now pasted that particular um, OSNAP Settings um, command in there. And here's our preview on the left, or right, my other left, yeah. Okay, awkward moment. We needed one of those this webinar. All right, so uh, I do want to make a couple of changes here. To the uh, to the commands, so I'm going to select this um, and mid quad node, and I'm going to change how this is displayed. I want in this case, I want text, and I'm, the only reason I want this is because I want to demonstrate it. Okay, I probably wouldn't do this on my own menu. I have tool tips if I really need to know what it is. Okay, note how that has changed. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this one here small with text and I could even do that for the uh, drawing utilities one and I might as well since we are here oops didn't want to do that didn't want to right click all right small with text now I'm going to go ahead and click apply and I probably should have done that a lot earlier frankly I'm going to click OK I just like doing this every once in a while to clean things up a bit. One thing you'll notice is there's no new tab up here. I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more changes here. The first one being I had said that uh, in the tools CUI, I need to add commands to a panel. Then I also need to add those panels to a tab. There's my tools custom, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag this panel. Drag the panel. Tab. Oh, <laughs> not the whole tree, just the branch. Yeah, another awkward moment. Boy, 
you know, when it rains, it pours. Anyway, I now have those added to my tabs. Yay. Okay. I do kind of know what I'm doing. All right, I've clicked apply because I do like to save those changes. The thing is, even if I close this dialog right now, we're not going to see the tab up there. It has to be added to your workspace. And what I like to do, and it's good practice really, I'm going to switch back to the main CUI, the ACAD CUI. I actually like to create a custom workspace. And you can do that from down here in the workspace control, the gear, the lower right-hand corner of AutoCAD, uh, the screen. Or in this area here, I can select workspaces and click new workspace. I could also copy and make a duplicate of an existing workspace. So in this case, this is my default and current workspace. But I can say duplicate this and then I can add on to it. As it is, I want to add it to this workspace that I already have, um, that custom tools menu, okay? So what I've done is I've gone ahead and selected this. The tools menu, of course, is loaded as a partial menu. So having selected this, I'm gonna click in the right, top right pane, where it says customize workspace. And when this turns blue, that means I can customize this. And it may not be that intuitive, but we really don't do any work over here. This is just showing us what's available there. We do our work over here on the left in the top pane. And what I'm going to do is um, select my ribbon. I'm going to, I had menus. Yeah, okay, I do want my menus enabled for right now, okay? Um, but um, here's my tabs that are available for me to add to that workspace. Lumdy dum, this is one of those awkward silent moments where I know what I'm doing and I got lost in myself. So. can't remember my name. And I'll just click done here for a moment since I'm being stupid. Oops. Yeah, tools. Uh, this is a really, really awkward moment. I do this all the time. Uh, not the awkward moment part. Well, that too. But um, I think I know what I did here. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was awkward. Okay. Let's take some questions right now while I'm trying to uh, trying to get my brain back on uh, on speed here. Okay, so if you have any, let's see. Um, let's see if we can find some questions. So Sarah, there was a question about um, AutoCAD LT, whether this uh, macros can be done in AutoCAD LT. Yes, the macros can be done in AutoCAD LT, uh, unless they are written as lists. You can't do that. But uh, simple macros, I just posted a link on about um, control, you know, 
Shift Six C, Shift Six C, which is the escape character, and um, then you can type in the command and basically follow through just like you were doing it on a command line. So just write down the steps that you do on the command line and basically program those in. Uh, if it's like a uh, copy command, you can say copy and then semicolon for the entry key and wait for an input for selection um, and basically easily can uh, create macros using the just what you type on the command line and the shortcuts that you so that is correct. Yeah, the only, uh, you know, that's one of the limitations of AutoCAD LT is that um, Lisp, among other higher end program, programming languages, are not, um, uh, are not available. So um, macros, diesel, uh, those are the type of programming you can do in AutoCAD LT. And all the macros I've used here will work in AutoCAD LT. So I'm not sure why things aren't updating the way I want them to. Oh, let's try this. So we're just going to uh, goof along with Boker. Unless um, uh, there are more questions, I'm willing to answer those right now. There we go. Okay, actually, I'll move on. So what happens is, and I've had this happen before, and it's kind of annoying, um, and I did write it in the documentation just so you don't uh, run into this awkward moment yourself. And that is after you've um, applied all your changes to your custom menu, you've created that tab with the panels with the commands, click Apply, and then click OK to close the CUI editor. For some reason, with some modifications that you make, um, it does not refresh the CUI until you do so, OK? So I've done that, and now I've made the ACAD CUI, the current customization file, I've selected and uh, selected my default and current workspace. And then I've clicked on done, which is where everything turns blue because it's depressed, I guess. Then I'm going to scroll down a ways until I get to that partial CUI down here. And here, I'm going to go ahead and say, look, go ahead and add that tab to the workspace that I have, OK? And over here, yeah, I can move those around a bit. So I can just go up or down and, and uh, apply my tool palette group where I want it to be. Now that I've clicked Apply, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK again. And you'll see because it has been applied to this current workspace that the tools menu is here. Okay, so uh, there's my tab. Here's endpoint for O snaps, endpoint, midpoint, center node. And oh, I must have copied the same thing over twice. Uh, you'll get the idea. Okay, if you don't follow Voker and follow what I wrote down. Okay, um, O snap utilities. Uh, if I click on this, there's that OSNAP dialog that it brings up. And here's the purge all function. And you'll see that if I do a F2 here, um, it's gone into the purge command. It's purged everything without me having to verify it and gone into the um, um, purge, excuse me, purge up here. Purged everything. Yeah, I must have had a mistake in the macro. I'll double check that. I, I know it works. I think I just made a typo. Uh, but I'll clean, I'll verify it works in the script and everything so you guys have it. Uh, but here's the purge registered applications down here. So this does work. Um, I must have just copy and paste the error. So several awkward moments today. <laughs> Let's do a couple of more things. With that. With that. It happens to the best of us. 
Never to you, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so let's do uh, do one more thing here. Since I kind of squeezed through that, I'm going to go back into our customized um, um, user interface dialog. And, you know, sometimes I just like to have things available at the tip of my fingers, right? In this case, my right mouse click finger. All right, so uh, these are our shortcut menus, the ones that, you know, I right mouse click and it uh, allows me to select these options, right? Um, we have several here. Some of these are static, some are context sensitive. For example, our default menu uh, is basically a static menu. It doesn't, it doesn't change. Um, unless we're selecting an object, you know, so if we select a block, things appear for blocks. In this case, if nothing is selected, if no command is active, um, I get this where it repeats my last commands. I can access the clipboard functions, use some zoom functions, etc. What I'm gonna do is that purge all utility if I don't have anything selected, why not let me just purge at the same time? You know, purge the drawing. I'm done doing stuff, I just wanna clean it up. So I'm gonna add that to this particular menu. I'm gonna go down here, and I am going to make things a little easier for myself by selecting custom commands. You'll see there, it lists the commands that are in all the partial menus, okay? And one of those, of course, is this purge all command. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag it above the clipboard item. And there's a separator here. I want to add a separator to keep this a little, you know, separated from the rest of the commands, obviously. I'm going to click apply. Now, that's not the only place I can do this. Let's let's first of all see how this works, okay? Macro, of course, is needs to be cleaned up, but there's my purge all command, and it's gone through it, and it tells me, hey, you're drawing safe. Yeah, I'm not sure where I put that typo in. Uh, we'll fix that later, but let's do this one more time. I can um, go ahead and go into the CUI here. And let's do something just a little different. Let's add something to one of the context menus. So again, I'm gonna expand shortcut menus. And this time I'm gonna select block reference object menu. And once I've done that, I'm gonna go down here. And um, okay, so first of all, I'm gonna add the explode command to this. I don't want you guys going around and exploding everything, okay? It, it kind of ruins the integrity of the drawing, but we all know that every once in a while, we need to do that, okay? Um, for the most part, I'm just using this for demonstrative purposes. Don't try this at home, or do. It's good practice. I'm gonna type in here, explode, and selecting that, I'm gonna drag and drop it here. Drag it above annotative object scale. Come on, you can do this. There we go. I'm also gonna put a separator below it and insert another separator so that that'll be above it. Uh, again, to just kind of keep it segregated from the rest of the commands. And I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. I'm gonna click okay. Let's just quickly create a block. I'm not gonna explain how I'm doing this. Most of you probably know how to create blocks. And we'll just keep all the defaults because this is just a quick and dirty circular block. Okay, I've selected it. I right mouse click and lo and behold, explode. and it works. So what I'm trying to show you is that you can modify these to add those functions which aren't readily available um, uh, when you're 
selecting certain objects, maybe, or maybe you want to use a different command. Um, hey, talk to your CAD admin prior to doing any of this. Okay, don't don't go messing up your company's stuff. Um, create a partial menu if you are going to customize. And here's item number two on our agenda was what to do when customization goes wrong, okay? Because you could screw up. I mean, I'm not saying you're gonna, you're probably perfect, but it could happen. I'm gonna go back into the CUI editor here. If I completely hose my ACAD menu, uh, one of the things, I have two options here, okay? Or I could do this to a partial menu. If I hose this guy right here, okay? doesn't matter which one, what I can do is select whatever menu I screwed up and I can either restore it to the last backup file that it created when I hit apply. This is why I always click apply when I make changes because it creates a backup. And if it, I've done a lot of work, I'm gonna go ahead and test it. Um, if things are wonky, um, I can either modify it quickly, obviously, or I can just restore it to the uh, last backup. If I'm not sure where the screw up happened, I've just done a lot of changes. Um, I may need to reset that entire CUI, okay? And that's just gonna rebuild the menu from scratch. It's similar to resetting AutoCAD to its default settings, except you're only resetting the AutoCAD menu. So um, keep this in mind. It's, um, it's a good way to get out of a hard spot, okay? So um, there's a lot more to customizing the CUI. If you're doing macros, be sure to get all the syntax right or don't lose any of it when you're copying and pasting like I did. Um, but for the most part, uh, this should get you started, I hope. Um, there are some limitations. Uh, for the most part, this is a very powerful tool, okay? Um, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. Let me go ahead. Uh, I'm going to finish up um, with my little slideshow, and then we'll take some more Q&A. Uh, we already did that part. Okay, so hey, I put some additional resources um, in uh, in the slide deck. Uh, the links are, um, uh, a lot of them are to the help file, okay? Uh, so about customization, workspace customization, good thing to know about. Customizing toolbars, um, creating new commands, and that would include the um, uh, macros, uh, auto, CAD and AutoCAD LT and all the verticals, they have a great customization guide built into that help system. So um, you can take a look at all the neat things you can do. Create your own hatch patterns, create your own fonts, create um, your own custom menu with your own custom commands. Um, also, just for the heck of it, I threw tool palettes in there. Again, they aren't associated with the CUI, but um, Hey, good stuff there. And then, of course, the about migrating and transferring custom settings. Uh, not only is this about migrating and transferring, but you know, before you do a lot of customization, it's always a good idea to back up all your other settings. And uh, this document does talk about how you can export your settings um, from AutoCAD to be imported if you do screw up the entire application or if you need to reinstall or install it on a new computer. And then of course, uh, we did a web webinar a while back, Beyond the Basics, Macro Automation, and uh, this discusses the uh, macro, uh, creation of macros, um, and in, I don't know if it was too much detail, but there was quite a bit of detail there, I think. Several examples of different types of macros, so that should help you get started there. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we will take Q&A in a moment. Um, hey, feedback is always welcome. Um, and if you have suggestions for future um, webinars, um, you, know, uh, you can either email us con uh, comments um, 
is the subject line build your AutoCAD IQ uh, just because we have a lot of different uh, teams doing webinars and that one will get to us. You can also leave feedback in the forum and uh, all these links are in that email reminder that was sent to you about the webinar uh, as well as uh, your original registration um, email. So um, yeah, those will be available there. And uh, the slide deck, the script, which includes the sample macros and the menu file that I created um, will be available on our box account. Okay, let's see if we can find some questions. I believe if anyone else wants to ask some last minute questions, I believe we got to majority of everyone's questions today. Um, I don't have any other pressing ones. Naman, do you have any that you'd want to bring up before I throw it back to Volker? Well, uh, I think uh, some, a lot of people were just trying to uh, figure out how you know to customize um, the macros and um, you know where to find more data, uh, information about the macros and how to write them, basically. Uh, so that 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 was a prevalent question that I was receiving. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, frankly. Um, I did launch a poll here. If you could take a moment or two to um, click in one of the radio buttons there, and uh, let us know if you learned anything new. Um, you know, if you didn't, I, I always hate wasting people's time. I maybe got a good laugh out of my awkward moment. Um, and if that made your day, that's great too. Uh, if you did learn something, and it looks like a lot of folks did, I'm happy. I'm happy that it was worth your while attending here. Um, and we hope to continue to do so in the future. Let me plop this up on the screen. Yes, that is technical verbiage. Plop. And you can see the results there. So. Um, yeah, I'm glad, um, I guess I'm glad nobody has any additional questions. Again, the docu I tried to make the documentation um, pretty in-depth. So uh, you should be able to work through that and use the sample data as well. And uh, since there are no more questions, I think we'll give you guys 10 minutes or so back so you can go take a coffee break since your boss thinks you're all at in a webinar right now. Okay. You can do this on the sly. Hey, as they say in the movies, thanks. What is it? Now I forget what it is, but um, have a great day. I'm sure they say that in the movies as well. Thanks for being here. See you next week.